Jacob, would you join me on stage? Uh, as Jacob Oliva, Chancellor Oliva, is coming up here, he's going to talk to you a little bit about the work that was done on the best standards, and he'll explain that. Uh, Jacob's background, uh, he's been in education most of his life. He was principal at uh, undergrad or at uh, K-5 uh, and elementary and all the way up through uh, the, the higher levels. He also was the uh, superintendent of education in, Volusia, in Flagler County and is now the um, chancellor of education, director of education in, in uh, Tallahassee, working directly for Commissioner Corcoran. Uh, he's been working on the standards, uh, done a yeoman's job in my opinion, and so we would welcome you to, to explain to the crowd what happened. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for giving me an opportunity to stay a, a few minutes. I wish I didn't have to follow the one of the best and most inspirational speakers I've ever seen, so I'll try to keep it lively. Um, I've spent... Coming, getting close to almost 25 years in public education right here in the state of Florida, and I've had many different hats, as Mr. Flaw had alluded to. I was a special education teacher. I taught mostly in the primary levels. I've been an elementary school principal, high school principal. I was a district superintendent now before joining the state. But one thing that he didn't mention is I'm also a father of two beautiful young children. I have a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old that attend public schools as well. And I can tell you, I will never forget the day that I came home from work. I was a superintendent of a school district, and my daughter, who's 16 now, was in third grade. And I came home from work, and she's sitting at the table with her math homework, and my wife's like, you need to help Maddie out with her math homework. I have no idea what they're doing. I finally said, it's my time to shine. <laughs> finally, my day has arrived. And I remember sitting down at my own daughter's table of a school district that I ran. I taught third grade one year, and I couldn't help my own daughter with her math homework because I had no idea what they were doing. Right then and there, I knew we had a problem. And I think that problem, most of you know, is referred to as Common Core. So we've done a lot of work. And I can tell you, now that I work for the Department of Education, I have the privilege and honor to work for Commissioner Corcoran. And when he tasked me to lead this initiative for the state, our governor ran on education platform. And the second he took office, he gave us some very powerful tools in Executive Order 1931 and 1932 that gave us the authority to make some great movements forward for the children in the state of Florida. And when Commissioner Corcoran asked that I lead that initiative, I knew what the problems were. And I knew we had a lot of work to do, but I knew we couldn't do it by ourselves. And it was soon after we started getting engaged in that work and we put out websites and we started surveying people and we started listening to what was really happening in our Florida classrooms. I became really good friends with Keith Flaw, met Pastor Rick, and it saddens me to hear about the late Dr. Karen Efren. But we spent a lot of time together really saying, what are the problems? And they opened up a network to not just the Florida experts, the Florida teachers, the parents, the students that knew what we needed to do, but they introduced us to some national folks. And without their support, we would not have accomplished what we did yesterday. And yesterday, the State Board of Florida fully eradicated Common Core from our classrooms by adopting the best standards in the nation. Thank you. So we call them the best standards, and best is, we always have fun acronyms in education. It stands for the Benchmarks for Excellent Student Thinking. And that's what we should have our students doing. That's what we should have them aspiring to do, because when they can think, and when they can interact, and when they can debate, and they can understand what's going on in the world around them, they're gonna be successful in life. And we're really excited about that. When we look at the revisions we've done in English language arts, in mathematic, we are eliminating that funny math that focused only on strategies. We wanna make sure kids can get the right answers. And we wanna make sure that parents can read the standards and understand what they're being asked to do and be able to give the support to their own students in their own living rooms, just like the struggles that I've had. We've infused financial literacy. We've heard that that's a problem with our students. We integrated all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade, a reading list based on 
every major literary period, kids will be reading the classics and having great rich discussions around that quality text. They're going to understand their math facts. They're going to know how to write in cursive. And most importantly, we've views. Yeah, they're going to write in cursive. That's a big deal, right? <laughs> that, cur cursive's back. Yay. That, now, I, I don't know if I have time for bad jokes, but somebody once asked me why curf if cursive was important. I told them, and this is a joke, so don't get mad. I said, well, we don't teach how to write in other fonts like wingdings. Why would we teach cursive? But I don't know if you know what that means. But it's back because it's important and we want to do that. And really something we're really excited about is our reading list that we've established, the first in the nation, all the way to kindergarten through 12th grade. And the classics also include civic literacy where students will be reading primary source documents, classical speeches, and having a strong foundation on the Constitution. Now, this is the first step that we had yesterday, and this is what I have to remind people. We didn't get here overnight. It's not going to fully go away overnight. So we're starting on about a three-year journey now that we've got these standards adopted where we're going to be adopting new curriculum, getting in new textbooks along with these standards, writing new assessments. We're even streamlining and reducing the number of assessments that we're asking students to do. We're calling them shorter and better assessments because we heard that that's a problem with over-testing. And even in high school, we've heard that ACT and SAT is important for our parents. We're gonna make sure every student in the state of Florida in 11th grade has an opportunity to participate in one of those assessments. So we're doing a lot of wonderful things. We're very blessed to have the support of uh, Commissioner Corcoran and the leadership of Governor DeSantis. And I'm very honored and appreciative, Keith, of you and, and uh, the doors that you've helped us open because these standards that we've created would not have happened. We have not gotten them across the finish line if we couldn't tap into some of the network of the folks that you introduced us to. So we're very grateful. So thank you very much for allowing me to be here this evening. Thank you very much, Chancellor. Appreciate it very, very much.